Hi, and welcome to my Naked Brutality Guide. This video is divided into three parts. I'm going to talk about biomes, about the starting characters, and the procedure how to start your first few days of your colonist's life to ensure your survival and to beat the Naked Brutality Challenge. I'll try to cover up as many questions as possible, feel free to drop comments down below if I leave any questions open, and also if you like these kinds of videos, feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more. So let's get into this. This uh, Naked Brutality run is pretty simply uh, described, you start with nothing. So to survive with nothing is a pretty interesting uh, experience in case you never did that. Uh, it's really something funny and we're going just to... Uh, the settings here are not that important. Um, next up on the world map we're going to take a look on the possible biomes to start with the Naked Brutality. Every biome is really fun in its own way and uh, for the sakes of simplicity I'm going to divide the video into the hot biomes and then the cold biomes uh, after each other. So we're starting right in the middle. The center of the world are temperate forest biomes. These are basically, well, if you never did Naked Brutality and you want to get a, a little look on it, this is the easiest spot to start at. Temperate forests offer you a really easy supply of food, wood, and a lot of animals to hunt. So this is, uh, you will have some difficulties for sure, but the biome won't be the biggest of those. So I'm going to get towards the colder biomes first and then towards the hotter biomes. So when we head over to the boreal forest, this is quite similar to the temperate forest, but it's getting colder here. So your first priorities will be to get clothing as quick as possible. So first off, you'll uh, have some more pressure on that. But apart from that, the boreal forest offers you all the stuff you need. You have enough wood to build a shelter. You can uh, get yourself some bow crafted quite easily because there's a, enough uh, wood to get along. And once you have wood, you can kill animals and then you have clothing. Boom. Problem solved. So the cold of the boreal forest is a solvable problem because you also can uh, do campfires because you have lots of wood. Next up goes the tundra. This is a pretty challenging cold biome because uh, most of the uh, most of them have either no growing period at all or uh, only a very very short one. And as you see here, the temperatures are most of the time pretty serious. So getting clothes is a top priority in the tundra, and you're under quite some pressure because this biome doesn't offer nearly as much wood as the boreal forest. So. If you want to go for a real cold challenge, the Tundra welcomes you with a pretty balanced and fun uh, challenge pack. The plus side about the Tundra is as soon as you have your food and uh, a shelter going on and some weapons, the, there is a steady migration of animals you can hunt. So food is not the problem because you might be not be you might not be able to hunt animals. Uh, not to grow crops, but you can hunt animals all year. So that's that. Just take care of the cold. Then next up is the ice sheet. Well, this is some royal challenge. This uh, is maybe one of the hardest uh, naked brutality challenges. The temperatures go from are absolutely deadly. You're, you're going to have a extreme pressure on getting some clothes on and getting a shelter. This is something um, basically to explain you how to survive in the ice sheet we would need a different we would need a, a whole video on that <laughs> so this is really the the hardest challenge you can uh get on yourself or if you're totally uh nuts you go for the sea ice but uh well out there in the sea ice this is uh, basically the most brutal naked brutality experience you can um get and well <laughs> there are only a few handful of people in the world who have actually succeeded surviving here as far as I know. I don't know if that's really uh, true, but uh, the few YouTubers I uh, looked, looked for 
there's really not that much material available about surviving sea ice in the naked brutality. So ice sheet is way to go if you really want to put yourself on a strain. The cold biomes sum up in a TLDR. You need clothing really, really fast. You need a shelter really, really fast. But most of them offer you uh, enough wood to get uh, some fire going or um, and or some shelter. Um, except for the ice sheet, there you won't have wood and that's the big problem. And this... Well, like I said, ice sheet is a completely different topic. <laughs> and uh, I think the cold uh, biomes are covered with that. So with the hot biomes, I'm going to head over to the uh, to the tropical rainforest first. There's one. So the tropical rainforest is pretty comparable to the uh, temperate forest with the major difference that clothing is not a problem anymore. Once you go uh, to the southern hemisphere, not every time clothing is a big problem, but in the jungle, it's not that hot that you immediately need clothing, but the wild animals are a big problem. You're not good armed and the rainforests attract a lot of uh, wild animals so you'll have to build yourself some fortifications earlier in the jungle areas food is plenty wood is plenty animals are plenty you just have to deal with the pressure of wild animals and that's that i would consider the tropical rainforest as the easiest of the hot, hot biomes accompanied with the arid shrubland which is also pretty uh, comparable with the jungle in the means that you have less wood in the shrublands, um, but you have uh, a lot of forageable food with the agave fruits. There's a steady supply of animals living in the shrublands as well. Um, I would, well, compared to the jungle, you have less wood and you have less. Well, I would say the shrubland is a little bit harder than the tropical forest because you're closer to the de desert environment and uh, with the shortage of wood and the hotter pressure of the temperatures, you have to get yourself a little bit earlier some hat and some clothing, but that's pretty much it. Now we're heading over to the desert where the fun begins. The desert is the first biome where you have to take care of other things first. So clothing is not the top priority in the desert. As a matter of fact, two things are getting some crops down and getting some shelter quite quickly. Crops are so important because the desert only offers sparse amounts of uh, arable soil. But the big problem about the desert is you almost have no wood and there are almost no animals migrating through the desert. So getting your crops down early uh, ensures you a steady supply of food and uh, with the desert temperatures you're going to need some clothing as the second priority because you're going to get heat strokes but in the desert you're going to be able to get some passive cooler up and running um, to get some room where you can uh, shake off the heat strokes quite easily um, not so much with the extreme desert. The extreme desert is the pendant to uh, the ice sheet, although my personal experiences are the extreme desert is easier than the ice sheet because extreme heat is easier to fight off. You basically only need, uh, well, some clothing and uh, some room cooler. <laughs> well, the problem with the extreme desert is you almost get no wood at all. There's most of the time just one puny cactus living out there in the desert, so getting through the early game is pretty hard. And uh, like the ice sheet, covering up the extreme desert is uh, more complicated than the other uh, biomes I talked about, so I would rather go for a different topic there or a separate video much more. So. Between those, there's uh, a few special or much more unique biomes, like the swamps. Um, swamps are basically very similar to the forest. They just have almost no soil to build on and they're a pain to uh, play them. So I would consider Naked Brutality Swamps, well, I never tried that to be honest, but I think it's going to be a pretty uh, royal uh, pain. 
So there's also the cold bog somewhere in the northern hemisphere. It didn't generate on this map, but it's basically a pond on to the temperate or the tropical swamp where you just have tons of wood which are denying you building spots and uh, lots of bad spots where you can't build stuff. Pretty annoying stuff, but... So you can choose your uh, poison here on the map. Um, enjoy whatever you might want to. I think I gave you guys a, a rough idea what to expect where. So next up is the colonist you pick. It all depends a little bit on where you start. In cold biomes you have a little bit of other uh, dependencies than in hot biomes like I talked before. But there are a few things that uh, keep constant. So I'm going to roll around here a little bit. So to talk about a few things here. The Optimist, for example, is a very strong trait for Naked Brutality because mood is very important. Much more important than you'll ever than in your average urban uh, world experience. Because when you're alone and your character gets a mental breakdown, let's say it's a catatonic breakdown. You've lost the game. With a catatonic breakdown, you need somebody to help you. You're going to be unable to eat and you're dead. So Losing your mind when you're alone is an inherent risk of losing the game. So Optimist and such traits are pretty strong. Pretty uh, unbearable in my opinion are traits like the Wimp. Like 60% lower pain shock threshold. You have to endure things when you're alone. So I wouldn't play a Wimp unless I really have to. So apart from that, I like hard workers. A global work speed is always uh, quite beneficial. Very neurotic while <laughs> lowering mental break, uh, break threshold. I like to play these guys, but it's uh, it's a double-edged sword, you know. Tough is one stat I really love for uh, naked brutality runs. You see, a incoming damage multiplier on. Basically, a tough person only gets half the damage. This is pretty strong, especially if you're all, all out there alone, alone. Tough people are very, very good. So let's check out there. So one thing I really want to have. So depressive is the opposite to the optimist. Sanguine is the really strong version of the optimist. There's nothing more to talk about those. There's just one thing I want to cover up as well. Well, nudists obviously are uh, also having their uh, <laughs> upsides. Super immunity is something I really want to cover up as well. Immunity gains speed 30%. If you're suffering from an infection without medicine, if you're suffering from a disease without medicine, this trade will save your life. Period. Super good. Super immune, super good. So what do we have next? Quick sleeper, well, it's nice, but not really that uh, strong on a naked brutality run. No, there, there goes the cannibal. Cannibalism in a naked brutality run is a strong trait because not only does it, doesn't it make the, your guy un, not unhappy to eat human because the, 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 What's it called? The debuffs of cannibalism, that's the word. When you're not a cannibal are brutal. Cannibals get happy when they get human. So you get the idea. It's a very strong trait for naked brutality runs. And uh, if you're not having any ethical uh, problems with that, take that into consideration. Apart from that, um, there's only one more thing I want to cover up before we get into these. Um. Well, Psychopath is obviously quite okay, but not stronger than usual. No, there's something else. Come on, don't be like that to me. Should have gone with a prepare carefully mod there. So... Come on, can't be. So obviously the game doesn't want me to show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, here it goes. The Jogger. This trait is also very, very powerful. A, a quicker move speed. Consider follow the following thing. In extreme biomes, the temperature is working against you. 
you're basically living on a clock at the beginning of the game before you die. A trade which makes your colonists move quicker is so valuable. So, gives you the idea. I think those were the most important. Let's get to the attributes. Um, construction is absolutely important. I would consider it as one of the most important traits. Because with a higher construction uh, skill, you're able to build more uh, quality of life things. But much more importantly, you're building quicker. Remember again, the clock of death. And you're also having a lower failure chance. And uh, failure chance is really nasty. Next up, mining is almost always a very, very valuable trade as well. Because mining opens you up the, ac the access to steel. Steel is a powerful early game material, giving you the opportunity to craft weapons or working benches and if, you, and if you have a high mining value you get that steel quickly and there again goes the, doom, the clock of doom. Cooking is something I really love as well, but honestly a value of 2, 3 or 4 is enough to avoid food poisoning in larger scales. Anything above that is really good because you get more food and you work quicker and everything but uh from my experiences uh, four is absolutely enough more is luxury much Im more important gets uh where is it the plant skill in general when you're in tr in biomes where you can't interact with plants which means when you're in a desert biome a high plants value is way more important than, than the cold biomes because in deserts i always try to get down crops as early as possible like i said and in the colder biomes you only need the plant value to chop down trees in a colder biome you are okay with the plants value of four in the hot biomes i would always try to get something like around six eight or something like that as so you want to so animals is uh something you can take not too much into consideration but there goes crafting oh boy crafting is so important um you can go for a lower crafting no problem but it makes your game harder in the way that everything you produce for yourself is much likely of a lower quality and a the difference between a poor quality clothing and a good quality clothing in terms of game stats is incredible. Same goes for a short bow, for a knife. All these items get massively upgraded if you have, like, let's say if I even get a crafting value of 10. If I get an excellent item in the early game, like an excellent tribal wear, which is most of the time the first piece of clothing you will craft in the Naked Brutality, if that's having an excellent stat, this can easily be a insulation bonus of several degrees of temperature and you, you will notice the differences so that's why i emphasize crafting so much and last but not least goes medical medical is also very very important because well you'll be all out alone with all this all the problems you'll have you'll be having a high medical value offers you two things you work quicker with a high medical value and you have higher percentages uh, of treatments when you're suffering infections or other diseases this can be life-saving so with the combat skills go with whatever you want to go shooting and melee are both fine i would always try to get both at least at well four or six um, passions are pretty good. Try to get passions on all the stats I mentioned there. And as you have noticed, might have noticed, getting all these things, good traits, good abilities all together is quite a difficult thing. So that's that. It's not possible to get the perfect colonist. Just uh, when you see somebody you want to play, get to that. So next up, I'm going to crash land in an easy biome to give you a few first steps so we're going to roll somebody who's uh, acceptable like this is a perfect example also keep in mind that you don't want any uh vital incapabilities vital incapabilities would be uh medical incapability hauling incapa incapability and violence incapability cooking is also pretty nasty but maybe Maybe you can tolerate that, but alongside with skilled incapability, well, 
skilled labor and capability, you're basically crippled if you have those. Um, if you're incapable of art or, or research, that just slows you down. That doesn't uh, kill you, you know. So that's that. So let's uh, pick up Mr. Manning and uh, drop down in the map to get into the last part of the video. I just want to uh, give you a quick example of uh, how I personally evaluate a map when I crash land on it. And uh, then this will sum it up. So we're here. Boom. Starting with nothing, um, the first thing I always like to check out is are there any natural um, structures available? On this map, sadly, the map generator really let me down. It didn't generate any natural structure for me, which is quite a bummer, but not the end of the world. So this at least gives me the freedom to choose my starting spot with other uh, aspects in mind. So the first aspect in mind, and oh my goodness, this mountain is glorious, would be steel. You see, there's a triple uh, amount, a triple um, resource deposit here. There's even compacted machinery around that. So this area will be definitely the spot where I want to live. There's even some jade, more compacted machinery down here. So this is where we're going to live. Another thing to keep an eye out are the steam uh, holes. These are also, well, if you get a spot where you can get some resources like this and steam holds together, this would be even better than the stuff I saw here. But uh, we're not, we're, we could be also settling down here if we want to. There's some steel and silver here. So for the long term viability, no, judging from that, I would even go here because you see, there are two steam holes in, in the vicinity. There's a lot of rich arable soil around me. And later on in the game, I can just mine out that uh, mountain and I'm good with that. Here, if I start, I have a very early access to a small uh, patch, which will be all I need in the early game. Maybe uh, uh, I'm going to start here, but the other option would be starting here and building up a very uh, easy, defendable structure. So, so as you can see, there's uh, never a completely easy solution. I need to chop some wood real quick to keep talking. There it goes. So dropping down the stockpile zone to teach the game that I own some wood so I can do some more examples of walls. So I personally would think after a lot of thinking my strategy would be to build myself some home here and just live here and mine out the stuff I need until I get some proper home. First things first, I would drop down some, I will, or I will drop down some sleeping spot here. Next things are very importantly, the campfire, because you want, you need this to uh, produce food in every means. And this is the first uh, source of simple meals you can get. If you're having the steel to accommodate it, you can also go to a fuel stove. But uh, I almost always start with a campfire together with a butcher spot to uh, butcher the animals you hunt and a crafting spot where you can make yourself your tribal wear, your knife and your short bow which will be the first items you will pretty much craft every time when you're playing Naked Brutality. So the order of events is almost uh, pretty, almost uh, every game pretty simply said. When I have somebody with a higher shooting, I go for a short bow first. If I have a higher melee, I'll craft a knife out of the compacted steel. And after that, you're going to hunt whatever you can. So go for the small animals. These are the most uh, simple catches. Maybe if you have a strong fighter, you can go for some bigger animals, but always keep in mind, you have to pick your fights wisely and you have to live on with your wounds. Of course, the challenges get harder with the biomes you pick and with the storyteller settings. But this process I showed up here, finding yourself some shelter, 
um, checking out where you want to live, gathering up the primary resources of steel, wood and a defendable niche are always the same. There's also always the crafting spot, the butcher spot and the campfire as the center pieces of your early game. The temperature regulating uh, systems of a passive cooler um, in the hotter biome is very very important too. Wood is very valuable in hot biomes, but it can save your life during the early game to have a passive cooler up and running. Keep in mind that you also can uh, forbid the passive coolers to be reloaded so you can save your wood if necessary. Like save it up for heat strokes uh, building up and then toss some wood into the passive cooler and then forbid it again and enjoy some cool room and you can use your wood really sparsely with the passive coolers, but they are, they counter the heat strokes and you really, really need them. Like the campfire is countering the heat stroke, uh, the freezing um, effects of the colder biomes. One really important thing I want to point out as well for the cold biomes, steam holes are something you want to uh, use if you can. So if you're suffering extreme colds, do some, keep in mind that this here, will result in a hot room. The temperatures will ultimately kill the person inside, but you can shake off a cold, uh, the cold debuff in this hot room around a steam hole. This is pretty important when you're having no wood available, like in the ice sheet biome. So when you're really having no wood and you're needing some heat, Build, around, build some walls around a steam hole and you can warm yourself up with that. So that's really some something you can uh, you will need in the really extreme environments. And uh, when you're with the extreme hot environments, um, the other a, a very important advice there is you can achieve a lot if you aim for the passive cooler, like I said, and go for a hat before the tribal wear because the hat already insulates you some somewhat and it needs a lot less materials and in a lot of hot biomes there is um the the temperature doesn't exceed the comfortable uh level the temperature range as hard as the cold biomes do for example, like here, he's only insulated for 16 degree plus. In a cold biome, which uh, so which give which delivers you a permanent minus 10, a hat won't do nothing for you. But in a biome that only has like let's say 30 degree, 31 degree, a good hat can solve a lot of problems or at least slow down the buildup of the heat stroke a lot. So you don't need to uh, use as much wood with the passive coolers. So, I hope that helped you a little bit. Feel free to drop me more comments with questions, because there's a lot to talk about in that topic, but I tried to keep myself as precise and short as possible. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed, and see you guys next time. Bye-bye.